Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Um, it's really great to be here. Um, I went to school just up the street from here uh, at UOP. And uh, I grew up in LA, and I came up here. And it was the first opportunity I had to take a city boy and plunk him in the middle of California agriculture. One of my best friends was a guy named Cal Oda, whose dad was a grower shifter of a hot naka and Oda, grower and shipper of Stockton Red Onions. And I remember the very first agricultural festival I ever went to was a gathering of Japanese American farmers, and I won a crate of asparagus. Now think about this. You ever see, remember what a, how it, crates, you know, back in the day, we don't really do it this way anymore, but they were wooden and they were slanted and there was like enough asparagus to feed like an army. And, you know, I took it home to my little, you know, we had a house out in the Delta and, you know, it was like, you know, four, four college students probably didn't even know what to do with that much asparagus. I, I, I developed an appreciation and it started a lifelong um, uh, love affair, if you would, for me and agriculture. Now, you know how love affairs go. They're not always perfect, right? They've had their ups and downs. And I've had my ups and downs. But what happened for me was I had this opportunity to work with an organization called Ag Innovations. And as um, uh, Mike said, we're, we're unique. We're a nonprofit whose sole mission is to build stronger bridges within agriculture and between agriculture and its allies. Now, how many of you know what a dentist is? You, you can raise your hand. It's OK. OK, how many of you know what a professional facilitator is? Good, that's few. I have one of these jobs. You know, if I go up to somebody says, you know, if they, and I say, what do you do? He says, well, I, you, know, I, 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 you know, I work down in the garage. And, I, and he looks back at me and says, what do you do? Well, I say, well, do you, can you sit down for 10 minutes? Um, because I have this interesting job, and it's my job and role to try to help people think together to, as we say, rise above the distinctions and differences that divide us so we can see what unites us and move forward. That's our goal today. In fact, today, we have a few very clear things that we're trying to accomplish together. The first thing is we want to make sure that our friends in livestock and our friends in, in fresh produce understand how difficult the situation is that we find ourselves in. The second thing is we want to make sure that we're developing uh, a, a better capacity to talk to each other, not just out of anger and fear, but out of a problem-solving framework. Because there's, that's what we do in agriculture is we solve problems. The third thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we've got next steps around research, around collaboration, around working on things like metrics that will actually make a difference in improvement over time in the field. It's not an easy thing that we have today, and we're going to use every minute of time that we have. We're going to start the day by talking a little bit about what's been accomplished uh, since the Remain outbreak. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, what, uh, what the regulatory frameworks are that happen on both sides. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about what we know from the science perspective. And for those of you who are able to stay with us, you can help shape where we go from here. Because in the afternoon, we're going we're gonna to get out of these kind of linear tables and we're going to sit around and talk about what we can do together. And how does that sound? Is that worth your time today? Give me a thumbs up. It helps. You know, tell me. I, it's like, you know, I'm not like a behind a projection screen. I'm actually looking at you. So if you, you give me that thumbs up or a smile, it helps me keep going. You know how it is? Um, now, I, as I've said, I, I've been, um, I've, I've worked in this building multiple times. Multiple times. And it's such a great testament to how important agriculture is in California. And every meeting I've done here and every event I've done here has, has brought people together that we're, we're trying to struggle with, how does California agriculture adapt? And that's exactly what we're talking about today. It's the next level adaptation. How do we create a food system that is, that's got safety at the center and also economic viability and respect for the diversity of California agriculture? Now, forgive me, I gotta move these chairs because I gotta get back to this piece of paper here. Um, one thing I'll tell you, though, is that every group I've worked with tends to has add a skill 
of learning how to talk to each other effectively. So a little bit of what we're going to do today is practice that. Forgive me if this is something you're really good at, um, it, 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 but it, it's helpful. So I'd like to talk a couple of meeting agreements that I think are useful in a, in a setting like this. And I'll see whether or not you agree. So the first is, I'd like us to, to stay in a solution focus moment. What can we do? Where do we go from here? We can't change what's happened in the past. We can only change what goes on in the future. That's the only thing that we're given. Um, so uh, a solution focus. The second is to stay on topic and on time. California agriculture at this moment has an incredible array of challenges. How many of you here are concerned about surface and groundwater availability? can raise your hands. I, I can imagine if you're in there, right? How many of you here are, are concerned about um, uh, availability uh, uh, of, of uh, willing workers and labor, right? Pesticides, um, markets, trade, right? So California is in the crosshairs of so much. So today, though, food safety is our topic. That's where we're going to stay. Um, I want to encourage you to do something that you would imagine somebody like me would say to you, listen. But I want to put a spin on it. Because frankly, your everyday listening isn't going to be good enough today. Because when we're upset and when we're um, conflicted and concerned, often our listening skills decline. So I want you to do two kinds of listening for me today. The first kind is I want you to listen to when you stop listening. Now, that seems like so strange. What would you do? What does that mean? Well, here's the thing. How many of you ever had a, had a quarrel with your life partner? And they, they start to go on and like this, and then pretty soon, you're like that, right? You stopped. You're not paying attention to what they say at all or they're not paying attention to what you say at all. Why? Because they've said something that really pissed you off. And that's the moment we stop. When that happens, write that down. Pay attention to it, because that's where we want to think about how do we talk about that, that part. The second thing I'd like you to do is, is um, many of you may have this experience too. If you ever have spent time with kids, sometimes you'll be around a kid and a kid will start talking and telling you about how excited they were about something. And you just see this you, opportunity. It's like, oh, wow, you like trains that much. Let's go to the train store. Let's go, to, let's go and, and ride the, ride the uh, Mountain Express. There's this listening for opportunity. Now, I know in conflict that's hard to do, but you can, and there is, because there's opportunity in this moment. Opportunity to reflect on how we got here and opportunity to reflect on where we need to go. I like to ask you to do something else, to respect our differences. The old saying that you can walk a mile, you have to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes has never been less true, never was true to begin with. I will never understand what it was like to be you, Richard. It's not possible. But you are the expert on that experience. And I respect it 100%. But I'm going to ask you to do the same for me because my experience could be very, very different. Nobody owns the truth here. We all are part of the whole thing. So I want us to respect our differences. Um, I'd like to encourage you to do something that you think is kind of funny in a meeting like this. I want to encourage you to be curious. How did we get here? What's actually going on? What's, what's underneath this? Why curiosity? Curiosity is the sister of creativity. They go like this. You cannot be creative if you are certain of everything that you know. It's not possible. If you have the answer in your back pocket, the end of the conversation is over. So I'd like to encourage you to not do that today, just for a while. I'm not saying to you know, abandon every deep hell of belief or experience you ever had, but let's suspend our certainty for just a little bit. And then finally, let's share the air. Now, many of you will be the kind of person that never speaks in a meeting like this. How many of you kind of feel that way? OK, so I realize it's hard to do, but the population of human beings 
are broken up into people who are introverts and extroverts. They're way more introverts than extroverts. We, and I actually, believe it or not, am one. We typically don't speak in meetings like this. So I want to encourage you, if you don't tend to, to speak up. And if you do tend to, to watch out. So let me ask you, how do those sound to you? Are you up for that? Forgive me for taking a little bit longer with this than, than maybe we do in some meetings. But I find it's really important that we have these ground rules. Now, let me ask you, is there anything else that you need to have on that sheet of paper or from me that would help us have the robust dialogue we need? Anything else? OK. Now, I do want to ask you to do one thing for me. May I hold your phone for a second? All of us have these, OK? So I understand every one of you probably has got uh, people at home, at work, who are, are, are needing to be in touch with you. Please, just put your phones on silent. That's all I ask. You step out to take your calls, do whatever you need, but uh, make it so that we can uh, proceed with our meeting. Is that all right? Great. Now, let's get a sense of who's in the room. Um, how many of you in the room here would identify yourself as being from the regulatory sector. Now, because we're kind of spread out, I'd like you to actually stand up. So just stand up for me. OK? This will give you a chance. So look around, everybody. Get a sense of who's here. All right? Um, thank you. And thanks you know, for your, your contributions and your role here. How many of you here would identify yourselves as being from the fresh produce industry in whatever way? And go ahead and please stand up again. Let's take a look and look around. These are our friends and neighbors. Outstanding. Thank you so much. And how many of you would identify yourselves as being from the, the animal agricultural industry, whether that's dairy, ranching, whatever? OK. Thank you. So what did you notice there right away? There's not as many of our friends who are from animal ag here as there are from leafy greens. So let's be mindful of that when that setup comes up, because that we're trying to get a view on both sides. And the mere fact that they're more from one side than the other probably isn't, isn't representative of a, of a great sol um, problem solving sesh setting. So we're going to ask, our, our, uh, our, uh, ask all of us to particularly be careful around that respect piece. 